Do you know what the realm is? It's the thousand blades of Aegon's enemies. A story we agree to tell each other over and over till we forget that it's a lie. The Dance of the Dragons was a war unlike any other ever fought in the long history of the Seven Kingdoms. Though armies marched and met in savage battle, much of the slaughter happened on water, and especially in the air, as dragons fought dragons. But this was also a war that was fought in the shadows and stairwells, council chambers, and castle yards. The Dance of the Dragons is a great name for these major conflicts within House Targaryen that nearly destroyed the realm, but an even better name would be the Dying of Dragons. Before the Dance of the Dragons began, House Targaryen had 18 dragons, but when it was all said and done, nearly all of them, as well as the Targaryens, had died after they essentially devoured each other. This once great house would never be the same again. As you all know, HBO is set to release their new series House of the Dragon in a little over a year. As of right now, we don't know that much about this show, but now that HBO has hired one actor to fill the shoes of one of their major characters, we can start to get a sense of what this new series will be about. The very first slot they filled was King Viserys Targaryen, and this is what leads me to believe we will absolutely see the Dance of the Dragons. In my opinion, everything I discuss in this video will be seen in House of the Dragon. Over 100 years after Aegon Targaryen conquered Westeros, this Viserys Targaryen sat on the Iron Throne. Now, like most men who become the king, Viserys had hoped that one day he would have a son who could take over the Seven Kingdoms after him. Although Viserys and his wife made several attempts, they were never able to successfully have a son who would live long enough to succeed him. Viserys did, however, have a brother, Daemon Targaryen, also known as the Prince of Dragonstone. Now, since Viserys had no sons, his brother Daemon considered himself to be his brother's heir for the Iron Throne. Although Viserys did love his younger brother, he did not want him to become the king. Viserys was still hoping that his wife would give him a son, so they could settle the issue of succession. Rather than name his brother Daemon the heir, he gave him a seat on the small council instead. Well, this did not go over well with the hand of the king, Sir Otto Hightower. The king's brother Daemon and the king's hand, Sir Otto, did not like each other whatsoever. But Viserys wasn't about to get rid of his hand, so he got rid of his own brother instead. Now Viserys gave his brother a new job. He made him the commander of the city watch. Sir Otto was still worried though, because he thought if something did happen to Viserys sometime soon, then Daemon would become the next king anyway. So this is when Sir Otto suggested that maybe Viserys should name his daughter Rhaenyra his heir, since he has yet to have any sons. Viserys did not like this idea though, because he still thought his wife would give him a son eventually. Well, what do you know? One day his wife, Ama, did have a son, but unfortunately, she died during labor, and then their new son died the very next day. When his brother Daemon found out what happened, he made some jokes about how his son was only the heir for a day. Now, although Daemon was drunk when he made those jokes, it still made Viserys very angry. This is when he decides that Sir Otto's advice might not be that bad after all. Viserys has this amazing ceremony where he names his daughter Rhaenyra, the heir, and the princess of Dragonstone. Obviously, his brother Daemon was furious. He left King's Landing immediately. Afterwards, Viserys made sure his daughter was right by his side. He wanted to show her how things were done, so she would be ready for the Iron Throne. Now this is where things begin to get very interesting. You see, although a lot had happened in his life already, Viserys Targaryen was still a young man. He wasn't even 30 years old yet. So, the Grand Maester, as well as many others, thought that Viserys should get remarried. Viserys did like this idea, so that's exactly what he did. He married the 18-year-old Alicent Hightower, who was the daughter of Sir Otto Hightower, his very own Hand of the King. Now, it's said that Alicent even got along very well with his daughter Rhaenyra. During the wedding feast, Alicent kissed her on the forehead and named her daughter. That's right, life was good in the capital, but this new marriage did not make everyone happy. When Daemon Targaryen found out his brother remarried, he savagely beat the man who brought him the message. 
it was so bad, that man almost died. As of right now, Viserys' daughter Rhaenyra was still the heir to the Iron Throne, but that did not last for very long. His new wife Alicent, who was extremely fertile, gave him his first son, who they would name Aegon. Then, only a few years later, she gave him a daughter Helena, and only a year after that, Alicent gave him another son, who they named Amond. This was not good. Viserys, who once had no heirs for the Iron Throne, now has several. Now, the relationship between his wife Alicent and his daughter Rhaenyra began to fracture. They both wanted to be the First Lady of the Realm, but this obviously will not work. Although Viserys now had sons, he still wanted his daughter Rhaenyra to follow him in the line of succession. He figured the matter was already settled because he had named his daughter in his will. However, this is when Alicent and Rhaenyra became rivals in what is known as the Blacks vs. the Greens. His new wife Alicent represented the Greens because she was known for wearing a green dress. His daughter Rhaenyra represented the Blacks because she was known for wearing the colors of House Targaryen black and red. There were many loyal supporters ready to fight for their respective side. Some did believe that Viserys and Alicent's son Aegon should be the heir, while others believe Rhaenyra should remain the heir since this is what Viserys wanted after all. Well, as soon as Viserys died, they would have to settle the matter like Targaryens often do, with fire and blood. I believe this is when the first season of House of the Dragon could end. Similar to Game of Thrones, the first season could end with the major death of one of the major characters, which is what eventually sparks all the wars across the kingdoms. Anyways, when one of the servants found Viserys dead in his bed, he ran to Alicent to inform her of what happened. Now usually when something like this happens, they would have to ring the bells in the city to let everyone know that their king is dead. Then they would send a raven to Dragonstone so they could inform Viserys' daughter Rhaenyra, who would then come to the city for her coronation, since she was next in line for the throne. But Alicent wasn't about to allow that to happen. As soon as she saw her husband's dead body for herself, she locked the doors. Then she had the servant thrown into the black cells before he could have anyone ring the bells or send the raven to Dragonstone. This is exactly the kind of thing Cersei did when Robert died, so she could ensure that her son Joffrey would sit upon the Iron Throne. Later that same night, Alicent and the commander of the Kingsguard, Sir Criston Cole, held a small council meeting to inform them of the king's death. Sir Otto Hightower, who was the Hand of the King, and father to Queen Alicent, demanded that the succession be settled immediately. The small council wasn't sure what to make of this. They thought the matter was already settled, since Viserys named Rhaenyra his heir. This is when the commander of the Kingsguard, Sir Criston Cole, says, well, the son should come before the daughter. They argued about this for hours. That was until the Master of Coin finally stands up and basically says, he will not betray Viserys. So, what does Sir Criston Cole do? He opens up his throat in front of the others. This ultimately settles the debate. Viserys and Alicent's son Aegon would now be the king. They held his coronation in the Dragon Pit at King's Landing. His wife and sister Helena would now be the queen. It seemed as though Alicent had won. Not only was her son the king, but even her daughter was now the queen. Viserys and Alicent's other son Aemond left King's Landing on his dragon to go find other supporters who hadn't already sworn fealty for their new king. The banner of the black and gold dragon flew high over King's Landing and the Red Keep, as Aegon, second of his name, ascended the Iron Throne. But he would not sit there for long. When the news finally did reach Dragonstone, Rhaenyra assembled a meeting of her own. There with her was her uncle and now husband, Daemon Targaryen, brother to the late King Viserys. Daemon was considered to be one of, if not the most dangerous man in the realm. Rhaenyra only had a handful of lords who supported her, but the greatest of these was Corlys Valerion, who had the largest fleet of ships in the realm. His wife, Rhaenys Targaryen, also had a dragon. By now, Rhaenyra also had five sons of her own, but none of them were a man grown just yet. Now, although Rhaenyra may not have had as many supporters as Alicent and her son, Aegon the King, she did have something that gave her an incredible advantage over her adversaries. Rhaenyra, Rhaenys, and her husband Daemon had massive dragons. Three of her five sons had dragons as well, but that's not all. 
there were six more dragons on Dragonstone that still needed riders. So, again, although Rhaenyra may not have had the numbers, she certainly had the firepower. Armies can take and even hold cities, but dragons can burn them all to the ground. And the new king Aegon only had four dragons, whereas Rhaenyra had about a dozen. Rhaenyra was also hoping she could get the support of the few great houses not already sworn to the new king Aegon. Her oldest son, Jacares, flew to the Vale in the north. Her middle son, Lucares, flew to the Stormlands. If Rhaenyra could get these great houses on her side, this would be an amazing start. When Rhaenyra's son Lucares arrived in the Stormlands, he was shocked when he saw King Aegon's younger brother Aemond was already there, by the side of Lord Baratheon. Now this was thought to be the safer mission, but Aemond was already a fearsome man before he lost his eye and set a sapphire inside its socket. Although Aemond had beat him there, Lucares did what he could to get Lord Baratheon on their side. It would not be enough. Lord Baratheon chose to side with King Aegon and his one-eyed brother, Aemon Targaryen. Aemon's sapphire eye gleamed at Lucaris as he fled from the castle and mounted his young dragon, Arax. There was a storm falling down on Storm's End at that very moment. Lucaris and his small dragon struggled as they were flying through the hard sheets of rain and bright bolts of lightning. The loud thunder cracked and snapped as the sound of another dragon shook the very foundation of Storm's End. Suddenly, the one-eyed Aemon Targaryen rose through the clouds on his monstrous dragon known as Vagar. Not only was his dragon several times bigger, but Aemon's dragon was already the survivor of a hundred different battles. Aemon and his dragon Vagar unleashed their attack above Shipbreaker Bay. It wasn't long before Lucaris and his dragon fell from the sky, only to be swallowed up by the waves below. Now, the War of Fire and Blood began. When Rhaenyra received the news of her son's death, she instantly collapsed. She actually considered ending the war right then, until a raven brought her a letter from her husband Daemon. The letter said, her son would be avenged. Daemon actually knew a spymaster in King's Landing, who also happened to be his mistress. Thanks to this spymaster, Daemon and Rhaenyra were able to avenge her son's death by hiring assassins known as Blood and Cheese. One of these men just so happened to be a former gold cloak, and the other, a rat catcher in the Red Keep, knew all of the castle's secrets. So one night, Blood and Cheese were able to infiltrate the Red Keep, while King Aegon's wife, Helena, was helping their small children into bed. The assassins came into their room, each with a dagger in hand. They said, a debt was owed, a son for a son. They actually allowed Helena to choose what son she wanted to die. Now, she did try to convince these men to kill her instead, only they didn't listen. Finally, Helena decided that the younger son, Maelor, should be the one to die. Most likely because the older boy was King Aegon's firstborn son and heir. You hear that, little boy? Cheese whispered. Your mama wants you dead. Only it was the older son who lost his head. What was once a small dispute has now turned into a war of total annihilation. The grief and rage of losing a child could burn down the world. Either Aegon or Rhaenyra could live at the end, but not both. Shortly after this, Rhaenyra would strike again, only this time, she would take one of their greatest castles in the Riverlands. When the Lord of Harrenhal saw Daemon Targaryen above his castle on his dragon, Caraxes, he struck his banners and surrendered. However, this wasn't all that Rhaenyra would accomplish. Thanks to her other sons, Winterfell and the Vale had declared for Rhaenyra. This made Alicent and King Aegon furious. Aegon immediately fired his hand to the king, Sir Otto Hightower, who also happened to be his grandfather. This is when he made Sir Criston Cole, commander of the Kingsguard, his hand instead. Sir Criston swore that he would immediately march on those who declared for Rhaenyra. He said he would burn their castles down to the ground. The new Hand of the King and the Royal Army first went marching to the north. When they arrived, they laid siege to Rook's Rest, one of the black strongholds near Dragonstone. When the Lord of Rook's Rest saw King Aegon's armies outside, he sent a message to Rhaenyra, begging her for help. He had to sit there and watch as his fields and villages burned, as there was no word from Rhaenyra. That was until the day a shadow was seen in the sky, flying over the Green Army. Rhaenyra sent Rhaenerys instead, as well as her dragon. As her ancestors had done at the Field of Fire, 
Rhaenys set fire to Sir Criston Cole's army, but King Aegon had set a trap. Right as Rhaenys and her dragon were raining fire down on his army, two other dragons rose into the sky. It was Aemon on Vagar and the King Aegon himself on Sunfire. Believe it or not, Rhaenys did not flee from the fight. It was as if a second sun formed in the sky, as dragons fought dragon with fire. When it was all said and done, only Aemon and his dragon Vagar were uninjured. One of the most incredible looking dragons, Sunfire, had fell from the sky. The once new King Aegon was stuck underneath Sunfire, crushed. He was broken and burned. Some of his armor had melted right into his own flesh. Somehow, he did survive, as well as his dragon Sunfire, but they would never be the same again. Rainey's, however, was burned completely, and now nothing but ash. Her dragon also died, as it was ripped into shreds. Now after this happens, Rhaenyra gets a little concerned. So that's when she sends her youngest sons across the narrow sea, hoping that would keep them safe. Not only has she lost one son already, but now they're losing dragons. Only a few days after sending her youngest sons away for their safety, one of them comes back with his dragon severely injured. Him and his other brother were attacked by an enemy fleet just outside of Dragonstone. This is when Rhaenyra's oldest son and heir, Jacares, mounted his dragon, Vermax, and flew so he could rescue his other brother, and set fire to the enemy fleet. This doesn't end well, though. Jacares and his dragon, Vermax, get hooked like a fish and dragged into the sea. No one knows what happened to the other brother. He and his dragon were never seen again. Rhaenyra's advantage was beginning to fade, now that she's lost four dragons. Luckily for her, though, she had six more dragons on Dragonstone, but she would have to find riders for them. Dragonstone also had a lot of Targaryen bastard children running around as well, so Rhaenyra offered them gold and titles to any of the bastards who could ride the dragons into battle. The dragons killed several of these bastards before they could even attempt to mount them, but four of the dragons did accept their riders. They were immediately enlisted into Rhaenyra's army. Now that King Aegon was badly broken from the battle at Rook's Rest, his brother Aemon One-Eye took over the army. He was the blood of the dragon, and now he wants vengeance. He marches the king's army right to Harrenhal to take back the castle from Rhaenyra's husband, Daemon. However, when Aemon and Sir Criston Cole arrived at Harrenhal, they realized Daemon and all of his men were now gone. They had assumed that Daemon had fled the castle rather than fight. Later that night, they feasted their victory at Harrenhal. They had no idea what Daemon was about to do. Daemon decided he would much rather have a different castle. So, as Aemon, One-Eye, and Kristen Cole were marching their army to Harrenhal, Daemon flew Caraxes south, right to the gates of King's Landing. Since the One-Eyed Aemon had his dragon Vagar and the King's army at Harrenhal, the city was now defenseless. Rhaenyra was now ready to take back what she believed was rightfully hers. The city fell without a fight. The small council handed over Alicent and her daughter, the Queen Helena. But now the broken King Aegon was gone. Somehow, he had vanished from the city. Now that King's Landing was hers, Rhaenyra was finally able to sit upon the Iron Throne. After losing several sons and dragons, Rhaenyra finally had what she wanted all her life. However, when the one-eyed Aemon realized his arrogance had lost him the capital, he mounted Vagar and burned every village and castle he suspected of disloyalty. Aemon had basically abandoned his army. Therefore, Sir Criston Cole had to march the army back to King's Landing. He was hoping he could retake the city by himself, but he would never make it there. The river lords who had sworn to support Rhaenyra would find him. Now, Sir Criston Cole did attempt to challenge the lords to single combat, but they denied him. Instead, they filled him with arrows. The army he once commanded was destroyed thereafter. A new army of green supporters laid siege to the city of Tumbleton. Rhaenyra sent a few of her bastard Targaryen dragon riders in hopes of burning them all. They did burn the city, but they also burned all the black supporters garrisoned within that city. The bastard Targaryens had betrayed Rhaenyra. This gave Rhaenyra good reason to suspect that all the bastard Targaryens were disloyal. The only issue was her own husband, Daemon, was sleeping with one of the Targaryen bastards known as Nettles. As soon as Rhaenyra heard about their relationship, she was furious. Rhaenyra sent a raven, 
demanding that the girl's head be sent back to her, and Daemon should come back to King's Landing immediately. When Daemon found out Rhaenyra wanted her head, he allowed the girl to escape. The disappearance of Nettles made Rhaenyra even more angry. Daemon then sent a challenge to his nephew, the One-Eyed Aemon. Instead of leaving for King's Landing to go be with his wife, Daemon flew his dragon to Harrenhal alone, looking for a fight. After waiting for nearly a fortnight, a massive black shadow swept over Harrenhal. Aemon and his dragon Vagar had come at last. He laughed at Daemon for facing him alone. Daemon mounted his dragon, but he neglected to fasten the chains that secured the rider to the saddle. Right as the sun was beginning to set, both dragons leapt into the sky at once. Daemon swiftly took Caraxes up into the sky until they disappeared into the clouds. Vagar, who was the older and more slower dragon, ascended more gradually. Amond and Vagar were searching, searching, and searching, until, as sudden as a thunderbolt, a shrieking Caraxes dove upon Vagar. The dragons locked together and fell to the lake. Caraxes' jaws closed around Vagar's neck, but Vagar's claws opened up Caraxes' belly. Then, Daemon Targaryen, who had never fastened his riding chains, stood in his saddle. He leapt from his dragon to Amon's, and in his hand was Dark Sister, the Valyrian sword of Aegon's sister queen, Visenya. As Amon one eye looked up in shock, Daemon ripped off his nephew's helmet and drove the sword down into his one remaining eye, so hard it came out the back of his throat. Only half a heartbeat later, the dragon struck the lake. The lake boiled with dragon blood, and then was still. The battle above the god's eye ended in the deaths of both riders and both dragons. Unlike the one-eyed Amon's body, however, Daemon's was never found. Back in King's Landing, King Aegon's sister wife Helena flung herself from the balcony window, or maybe she was thrown. Who really knows, but either way, she was dead. Later that night, the city began to riot in the streets against Rhaenyra. They demanded justice for the death of Helena and her slain son. During all the chaos, a one-handed man began to demand that the dragons should be killed. Not only those of the enemies, but all of the dragons, especially the ones that are in the city, locked away inside the dragon pit. He said, that's where the demons live. This is their city, and if you want to make it yours, then you first must destroy them. Thousands of rioters begin to descend upon the dragon pit. On this night, there were four dragons locked away inside. When the rioters made their way inside, the dragons were already awake and very angry. Nobody knows how many men and women died that night, but in the end, it did not matter. They were able to kill all four of the dragons that were inside. Rhaenyra, who was standing atop the Red Keep, was watching as all the men and women were ending what once made her house and name so feared. It was as if she was too afraid to defend her dragons against those who would harm them. However, one of her older sons, Joffrey, was not about to sit there and watch as his family's dragons died. So he mounted his mother's dragon, Sorax, and tried to fly it to the dragon pit. But the dragon shook itself free of him, causing the young boy Joffrey to fall to his death. Rhaenyra was now feeling completely broken, considering all that she's lost. Rhaenyra then abandons the Iron Throne and sails back to Dragonstone. She was hoping that she could hatch the dragon eggs that were within the castle, but she never had the chance. When she arrives on Dragonstone, her guards were immediately slain in front of her and her last remaining son. Rhaenyra was shocked when she saw who was waiting for her inside the castle. The broken and burned King Aegon, who had vanished from the city, as well as his dying dragon Sunfire, were awaiting her. Rhaenyra, who was still defiant, said that she had hoped her brother was dead. After you, Aegon answered. Then, his dragon, Sunfire, covered her in his reign of fire. Then he devoured her in only six bites, while her only living son had to sit there and watch. Rhaenyra was now dead, and King Aegon sat upon the Iron Throne again, but only for about half a year. He was eventually poisoned by his own men, then he was replaced by the boy who had to watch his own mother burn and get devoured. When Rhaenyra's last son wed Aegon's only daughter, the Dance of the Dragons officially ended. This was all that was left of the once mighty House Targaryen. Well, there you have it ladies and gentlemen. 
This is essentially what happened during the Dance of the Dragons. Now, as I was saying before, I fully believe this is what we will see in the new HBO series House of the Dragon. I think this would make for one hell of an amazing show. Now, as you all know, HBO has already hired one actor who will fulfill one of the major characters from these events. Because of the choices King Viserys Targaryen made and the actions of his children, it leads to one of the greatest and tragic events in Westerosi history. If you enjoy videos like these and you want to stay up to date on House of the Dragon and the Winds of Winter, make sure you subscribe because I release several videos a week. As always, I want to thank everyone for watching. I really hope you come back for my next video. Have a great day, everyone. I will see you again very soon. Bye.